So the Pasture Raised Advantage research was really looking at New Zealand farming systems. So we know that in New Zealand we have a very unique farming system that is predominantly grass-fed. So the idea was to investigate the health consequences of humans consuming either grass-fed, grain-fed beef or lamb and comparing that to these other alternatives that are increasing in the market such as these meat analogues. What we do great in this country is grow grass. We've got the sunshine, we've got the rain, we've got the land and so the animals are pretty low impact on environment and low impact on water usage and, and the welfare is excellent for the animals when they're free range and when you look at it with the kind of depth that we were able to with our advanced analytics that's when you see that a whole food is full of things, all manner of compounds that are part of what our body needs. And so we found that the pasture-raised beef included substantially more of the long-chain omega-3 fatty acids, the good fats, than the grain finish did. One of the trump cards, as it were, of red meat is its mineral content. People think of it as a source of protein. Well, of course it is, but because it's a whole food, it encompasses a number of nutrient categories. So red meat is recognized for its nutritional quality. It provides quality protein and essential micronutrients like iron, zinc, vitamin B12, as well as essential fatty acids. And so these all contribute to health and well-being, things like energy levels, immune function, and growth and development in children. And so we were involved in uh, objective two of the project, which was focused on studying the digestion characteristics of pasture-raised meat and grain finish beef and also comparing with the plant-based alternative. In terms of protein digestibility um, among the pasture-raised and the grain finished beef, we found that uh, there was not much difference in the way the proteins are digested in these two production systems but we did find that the plant-based alternative that we tested had lower protein digestibility, which means that beef is highly digestible and breaks down quite efficiently in the human digestive tract. So we have some interesting results when we compared the fat digestion of grain-finished beef and pasture-raised beef. The pasture-raised beef uh, released uh, during digestion lower levels of saturated fatty acids or the saturated fats, which are linked with adverse health, health outcomes compared to the grain-finished beef. The pasture-raised beef also released higher levels of omega-3 fatty acids such as DHA and EPA, which are linked with better health outcomes, better cardiovascular health. So this research is important because there is a growing interest and understanding of the impacts of our lifestyle and dietary choices every day. So New Zealanders and general consumers are getting a lot of messages about food and nutrition and many of these messages are, are unfounded. At the University of Auckland we were responsible for the human clinical trials and I think the research is important because what we're doing that's a little bit different from other studies is that we're providing moderate amounts of red meat on the basis of a healthy diet. We're trying to make this very practical and realistic for the general population to say, okay, if you consume red meat as part of a healthy diet, what are the health consequences, either positive or negative? I like to look at the essential amino acids. So these are the amino acids that appear to help us build muscle and keep us strong. The lamb two beef meals were much higher in their essential amino acid response compared to the meat alternative. And also, even though the total amount of protein was similar, the amount of amino acids that we absorbed from the three red meat options was much higher. And that has not been shown in human participants before. Well, this research and the results are significant because they are specific to the New Zealand produced beef and lamb red meat story. The results from this research will help inform the discussion around the foods that fit in the diets of today and the diets of the future.